Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Very Reasonable Pilots Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Lund. With me, as always, is my co-host, editor, producer, co-pilot, gunner, Jacob Cloth. How are you doing today, Jacob? Um, same as I was last episode, because it's the same day. Last week, you mean? It was last week we recorded. I said last episode. La- yeah, last week. The- oh, yes, yes, sorry. Last week is when we recorded that one, because yeah. we never fuck up the schedule, and it's always perfect. I So t- this is the 50th episode, and that means that every 10 episodes, if you're unawares, we come to the podcast totally unprepared. And some would say that we are uh, always totally unprepared, but we come even less prepared on every uh, on the tenth episode, every yes, ten episodes. That is, that's true. That was probably the most roundabout way of explaining the fact that we do a you know original, you know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're getting kind of lost here. I can't. All remember. right. So improv. What? Yeah. I mean, essentially, but we do that anyway. Yeah. You know. Except this time, we don't have a little bullet points to look at to to you know make up our pitches in, about in character names. Yeah, so instead they all just end up being really similar, like Sal, yeah. or Sally, and Sanders. Yeah, Colonel. But I... Saul, Saul, Sally. I think the problem that Sally. we usually face when we when we do this is we don't have a genre that we want to explore. A genre? And I have a genre I don't I want to explore, but not a show I've explored it with uh, as far. okay. I want to do a legal show. A legal show? Yeah. God, we're getting boring like, at episode 50. Like Law and Order SVU. I've been watching a lot of Law and Order SVU. If we did, like, a police procedural and half of it was, you know, police officers in the in some strange setting we haven't come up with yet, uh, getting the criminals, and then the other half is, you know, prosecuting the criminals, and it's the, you know, district attorney and stuff. I think that would be cool if we, you know, put a legal show like that into uh, a fantasy or science fiction or, you know, contemporary okay. fiction. Idea. Yeah. Legal show, mm-hmm. but the attorneys, the whole the whole show is set at the court, essentially, mm-hmm. decides if you go to uh, the good place, the bad place, or the middle place. This, so hell, heaven, or purgatory, or whatever, you know. Is this the, your, is this the good place? Not the show. Oh, no. Um. Can we get anyway? Can, can we get what's her name? Who's that lady? Who's the lady from the Good Place? Um, Kristen Bell. Yeah. Can we get her to? Can she be in our show? Okay. Never mind. We're not doing this. Why so not? Put it in the space or something. <laughs> Wait, uh, why? Obviously, you've got too strong of a connection to this sitcom. To Eleanor Shellstrop, and the rest of the and Cheedy and Jason. Okay. And Tahani. The, the sitcom set in uh, medieval Europe. <laughs> See, and I... it's got a robust legal system for some reason um, where some peasant idiot is a, is a lawyer. Well, and people are just okay with that for some reason. Okay. I, my idea was maybe like the legal ramifications of super villainy. You know? Okay. Like so, Super Court. Basically, or like that's the name of the show, Super Court. Super Court, but like maybe our lo- the lawyers that we follow aren't representing the villains; they're representing the henchmen. So, like, okay, a guy oh, it's like mistreatment or whatever. Yeah, a guy is working for the Joker, for instance. This, yeah. this doesn't have to be a DC show, but the guy's working for the Joker, and they poison the water supply, and like sixty people die. Yeah. Should that should the henchman who did the dumping of the poison into the water do that? Should he get punished, or could it be argued that he, you know, his actions led to the deaths of sixty people? But that's manslaughter rather rather than murder. And I think that this show would be a very good place to ask very smart, well thought out legal questions about the dumbest things ever. Oh, okay. You know, like. If a man has been transformed into an animal, do, does the, you know, impending uh, stampede he causes because of that transformation mean that he is legally responsible? I think that there's a lot of leeway in, like, superhero fiction especially. 
Like, people are always, oh, I was taken over by the Phoenix Force or someone had control of my mind and my powers or whatever. And I think it would be very good. It'd be fun to ask, like, well thought out legal questions and, like, have that yeah. argument for just stupid shit. You know? I kind of like that. And it's good. Yeah. And maybe we could have a sort of progression. So we start off with, um, like, sh- you like know, our lawyer, lover. whoever our lawyer is. We'll say our lawyer's uh, Matt Wayne. Matt Wayne. Wait, who's... And Matt Wayne starts off as a public defender for henchmen. Yeah. Public hench defender. Maybe that's... Public hencher. Maybe that's, like, his name isn't Matt Wayne. It's, it has to be something better than that. Uh, John Wayne. Jonathan Blarsby. Jonathan Blarsby. Blarsby. That's better, of course. Or maybe yep. he should have, like, his name is, like, Death Gazer or something. Like... His dad was, you know, destructor, destroyer of worlds, and he oh. and he's become a lawyer to help out yeah. the goons that helped to raise him when he was a kid, because his dad would always take him on the capers, and the coo- and the his dad didn't give a shit about him, but the goons would always take care of him and make sure he was okay. <laughs> Maybe he has a really normal first name, so it's like <laughs> Phil, Death Gazer, the Destroyer of Worlds. Yeah, I like that. Or like, uh, it's like. I'm Tyler. Hey, everybody, it's me, Tyler Destructon. And I'm here to uh, applying for a job at Dairy Queen, please. I don't know. But some. I like that idea, though. Yeah. So he's uh, his, his dad or whatever. His dad uh, or his or mom, mom was a supervillain. Or supervillains. And he was always big fans of the henchmen because the, they would get fucked over. The henchmen would always, you know, would always be the ones who got hurt or got killed for. Yeah you know for his dad or for his mom and he realized like that's not cool i'm gonna stand up for the henchmen and so oh, and we could have a crossover where they he defends the henchmen from, my from the dish. henchmen but they get caught and then it's so midway through the season he defends the henchmen from the henchmen he loses second season of the henchmen starts with them going to prison and it's a prison season damn Mm. I love it. It's great. It's all connected. It's just a connected. web of shows. And then they get, we did this on purpose. We're like Kevin Feige in, in Marvel. Yeah, and then he gets and then they get stabbed in the shower by Ivan Illich. Yep. By Isaac Illich. And then they get hit with the then they, space seven eleven. They go forward in time. <laughs> and one of them cuts his turns into a dog. I don't know. And the other one becomes Batman Beyond. It's all the same. Yep. Yeah, it's all exactly the same. And I think, yeah, you could work. You could start the first episode of the show with him like working a case that's just like a guy who's like, I needed to take this job because of my family, and that's why I, you know, uh, let the Joker use my body as a bomb. That's why I let the Joker sew a bomb inside of me so he could get it past customs or whatever, like some yeah. weird crazy thing. And I, I think. As the as the series goes on, the- and then uh, like in that court case, they go through it, and he's like arguing, and then uh, the judge is like, "So, the Joker showed a bomb inside of you, right?" Mm-hmm. He's like, "Yeah," and you blew up in TSA. He's like, "Yep." He's like, "So, you blew up in TSA? How how are you? How are you here?" He's like, "Ah, you know, insurance." I got better. <laughs> Yeah. Joker takes care of his own. Yeah, I got ju- maybe that could be a thing. Like w- one of the episodes is they're going up against a sleazy insurance lawyer who's been selling like false uh like Joker insurance or like villain insurance where he insures your stuff in case of, you know, super villainy resulting in your death or injury. Yeah, and like he's he's not been following through, and there's there, it could be fun. There could be a, co- a court case to be like, he's like, I don't have to pay the insurance because it was the henchman who did all the things. I said I prote- I pay for the Joker's destruction, and the mm-hmm. you know our guy, William St- St- Sturgis, uh, his name is William Sturgis, uh, is like no, that's bullshit, and there's you know fun case. Maybe we could have yeah. some. Co- he's friends with some, you know. Maybe he's a friends with a PI who's who's you know, all doing all this secret casework stuff. 
And it's like oh yeah and the pi is like going around like you know searching through the rubble of the you know the fights or like talking to witnesses yeah who you know were like oh my god they was, did you see it uh ultraman and and mm. mega evil person were fighting here yeah and that one henchman just got fucking ran he through got by ultraman flattened. yeah ultraman. maybe we could have um like, it'd be nice to see, like, a scene in the future where our lawyer progresses, mm -hmm. uh, like, moves up in the world. So it starts off as, like, public hench defender or whatever. Yeah. And um, moves up. And now he's, like, defending, like, supervillains. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see a trial. Um, there's a scene in, like, the animated Batman show where Batman is on trial. Um, and all the villains are, like, the jury. Yeah. But um, he's on trial for, like, creating the villains. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see a trial where... Um, a villain accuses like their superhero uh -huh. of creating them therefore the superhero is responsible for their crimes and not them oh my god and, and our lawyer like argues it well and he wins the case so or, the, the superhero goes to prison and the villain stays out or maybe this our guy is since he's the defender he has yep. to argue for the hero because the hero is the one being accused of the crimes so he has to work uh, with the good guys, the quote-unquote good guys, who he thinks are just a bunch of, you know, uptight jerks. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I was going to say that our guy is, he's defending the, the villain because the villain is the one up for trial mm -hmm. for the crimes. And his defense is that he's not responsible, the hero is responsible. Or maybe that could be and the... just like, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Maybe that's the, maybe it's the episode. Like the first half of the, first half of the episode is our guy, Balerium Sigidu, uh, representing the villain and arguing well that the villain is not responsible for the, their actions because it's, you know, the hero causing yeah. them to react. And then he wins the case and the hero is put on trial and the hero hires him to be his defense attorney. Oh my God. So he has to argue the, the other side of the case. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be really interesting. In the same to see. episode, I think that'd be cool. And then, he, since he wins that case, they put the villain back on trial, and he has to. <laughs> and, then, and they're like, "All right, you got to come back." And he's like, "No, I'm I, look, I'm, I'm done with this. Someone else can handle this." Yeah, maybe the, the the episode ends with the villain. They hang themselves because they were found. They they everyone found out they were in Jeffrey Epstein's little black book. Oh. <laughs> they were like, well, it just came out like he's he was he was a terror. Like we know he like murdered people and stuff, but like this was really fucked up. Yeah, like it it comes out that he you know, our guy, Jeffrey Cuddle Trousers, uh, defense in the first. Oh my god, you change his name every three seconds. Yeah, what's his name? Jim Brushy. Phil Death Gazer, Destroyer of Worlds. Death Gazer. All right, Destroyer of Worlds. I like it, Phil. Uh, like his argument in the first half of the episode is like this man is a good man who's been driven to you know commit heinous acts by his here this hero this quote unquote hero and then yeah. you know at the end of the episode ends with like a real kick in the pants that like the guy he was defending in the first half was not a good man he's a terrible fucking person who used you to get you know famous uh yeah again um i think phil's uh, full name should be Philadelphia. Yeah, I like it. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Death Gazer, Destroyer of Worlds. Brilliant. Anyway. Yeah. Um, that's that's all. I, that's all I've got so far. I mean, that's all you've got. Maybe. Jeez, wow, we hit a wall here. This isn't good. Well, maybe he the season one could end with him being like challenged by like a cosmic court. Because I'm imagining that there would still be all sorts of superhero stuff happening. Oh, so we'll have, like, space. Yeah. Because, you know, like, superheroes go into space and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so maybe, he, maybe he's maybe he got a trial that keeps getting appealed up. Yeah. <laughs> it's and like... It, like, starts at the bottom, like, the very bottom. It's like a super basic case that he's working on since mm -hmm. the beginning. And it's sort of like a background case. Mm -hmm. So, like, they mention it in the first episode. Yeah. But they never really get... They don't get to the finale of it to, like, the eighth episode. Mm-hmm. So it's like he wins, and then they the state appeals, and then they go up to like the state court, and then uh, they go up to like the uh, you know the federal court, and they go up to like the supreme court, and yeah. then they go up to like the 
the organization of Earth's court. Yeah. Then they go up to like the solar system court. Next thing they know, they're in the galactic court. And then they're in like the supreme universal court. And it's like this super basic case of like this henchman. Um, he, he, like, he, he ran it's like sort of a complicated legal question. It's like, is the henchman responsible for like the villain's actions? Yeah. Because uh, it, maybe it's like the thesis of the whole show. Like the that that case. I was gonna say like maybe maybe it's it's something just really stupid and really unnecessary for all this drama. That's yeah. like oh uh, this villain did a super crime uh, that caused kind of like a rumbling throughout the city, and as a result of the rumbling, one of the employees of this restaurant dropped a cup of hot coffee onto somebody's leg and ruined their shoe and pants. Yes, and the henchman was the one who pulled the lever. Is the henchman is responsible? Is the henchman responsible for those pair, that pair of pants? And it's just like, no, yes, no. Or it, sh- it should be like, is a hot dog a sandwich? And then everyone wants to yell. And it just keeps going up because it, it boils down to like that legal question is, is the henchman responsible for the villain's actions? Yeah. I think this is perfect because it's like, it's as I said already. It's the thesis of the whole show mm-hmm. in like this really trivial case that doesn't matter, which is the show. Yeah. Um, and like it goes all the way up to this like extremely important universe court where like you've got like cosmic entities as the judges. Yeah, I'm imagining uh, and it's, it's like, like floating in space or something. It's like guardi- the guardians from uh, the Green Lanterns. They're just a bunch of little blue guys, and they're all just yeah. like floating, and they were monks, and they're just like, yes, we know. Maybe all of them transform into one single P, and that is the answer to the, the key to the universe. And then our guy picks it up and eats it. And he's like, yep, I just ate the entire galaxy. It was delicious. That's what he says. And he jumps yep. off of... The, I, I'm kind of running out of ideas here. How do you think it should end? Should he win the case at the Galactic Court, the Universe Court? I think he wins the case at the Universal Court. Again. But due to a legal technicality, his uh, person is still in jail. Uh, maybe or maybe like he- or no, gets sent all the way back down. So they because when you go to when you go to like the Supreme Court, mm-hmm. they can do what's called they can reverse and reprimand, mm-hmm. which means they send it back down because of like some legal mistake yeah. in a lower court. And uh, you have to start again from there. Oh, and, like, that court has to do their ruling again. Yeah. So it's like we get all the way to the top at the last episode. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, yeah, so um, it seems like this actually isn't a question of whether or not um, it's a question the of villain whether... is responsible. It's whether or not uh, shoes are valid items of a... uh, compensation yeah. under Section 4 of uh, villainy and superheroisms. So we got to send this back down to the county court. Yeah, this is going to family court. Or or maybe <laughs> it's like his client who he's representing has already been convicted of something that's like got him like 30 life sentences. So there's no way the guy's getting out of jail anyway. Anyway, so it's just like a principal thing. But it's just like this. And there's another thing. And it's like, yeah, and, and an extra six months for this thing. And he's like, no, I will not take the extra six months. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think it ends as all good shows end at the, where it started. I think our, our you know we start our show. He's our our main character, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, Philip Deathgazer Hoffman is is you know living and working out of like a shitty bodunk you know law firm with like a secretary who is yeah. you know. Maybe an alien. You could dog. make it like, uh, like you see Better Call Saul. Mm-hmm. Some of it. In his office is um, like in the back of a nail salon, and like his bed's in there as well. And his bed is like one of those like pull down beds. Yeah. You know what I mean? From the wall. Yeah. And I, it like blocks the door whenever he brings it down. And I think so. It could be something like that, like really small room in the back of like some other office building. Yeah. Or like uh, and he's, you know, store. He's just started out as a lawyer, and he's on his own, and he's you know working hard. And by the end of the by the end of the season, it's starting out and they're doing that cliche. We do that cliche thing where we uh, zoom in on them as they apply the name to the glass of a door. You know when you yeah. see, and it's like Jessica Jones, PI or whatever. We do uh, you know Philip Gazer, Death Gazer, uh, attorney at law, and Philip. His name's Philadelphia. Philadelphia's Death Gazer. 
Philadelphia Geth- Death Death Gazer. Oh Death. my god. Yeah. Philadelphia Death Gazer, Destroyer of Worlds. Attorney uh, <laughs> Esquire. Destroyer of World Destroyer of Worlds Attorney at Law. Yeah. And then he's like maybe he's got one of those really cheesy lawyer ads. And as you know, we're watching him move into his new office, you're hearing like, if you have uh, been injured or otherwise uh, impacted by super, super heroics or any other sort of powered individualistic, uh, you know, transgressions, call me, Philip Deathgazer, Destroyer of Worlds, Attorney at Law. I promise to get you nothing less than 25% of that hero's salary. You know. Uh, call me up and we'll talk about money love you yeah that's, what a great commercial that's how it ends love you kisses. what do you think his pi friend should be like i imagine his pi friend is probably like sort of like a uh you know tom cruise like in mission impossible ethan hunt character you mm-hmm. know what i mean like he's like a he's like a badass he could do all this cool stuff yeah and he uh, was like way over qualified for being a pi maybe i think and he, he like could he you know he he when we cut to like um you know him we'll have like you know the lawyer scenes or whatever and uh, the lawyer will talk to him and be like phil will be like hey uh, jack black i need you to um get some information on this case you know mm-hmm. i don't have a lot of money right now I'll, I'll buy you some burger king and he's like yeah sure whatever uh phil adelphius um i'll do it for you and then we like cut to him like doing all this crazy crap punching like a superhero in the face yeah or maybe he's like well known in like the superhero and supervillain com- uh, community yeah it's like a freelancer mercenary person maybe this p the pi like the pi his his you know identity and his secret identity is that he's he's very obviously like one of the big heroes in the city oh yeah, like, like the midnight yeah. you know swordsman or whatever and he's very obviously this hero. They all look they look the same, they dress you know, they have the same voice and everything. But our yeah. guy, who's meant to be like a very smart, like lawyerly person, just doesn't put it together at all. So mm-hmm. and I'm thinking maybe he lives in the back of a Chinese restaurant. The Midnight Swordsman, aka our PI friend, uh Michelle Swandolino. Michael. Yes, Michelle Swandalino. Michelle Swandalino. Uh, lives in the back of this Chinese restaurant. And and she's actually the Midnight Swordsman. Yeah. and she, Which she has like um, like speed sword powers yeah. or something. She can control you know I mean? swords she like runs, minds. goes really quickly and like slices people. Yeah. And maybe it's like for the first like half of the season you think like, oh, she's just like this sad PI living in the back of a Chinese restaurant. And like... There's some adventure thing, and they both need to suit up and get gear up and get ready to kick someone's ass, maybe. And by that, yeah. I mean she's going to kick someone's ass, and Phil's going to hide. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they go to her room in the Chinese restaurant, and she, like, presses a button, and a giant, like, door opens up, and they walk down into her bat cave, basically. Yeah. Which is just, like, the swordsman it, cave. You know, the midnight cave. Yeah, the mi- the swordsman. What what's the, mi- the midnight's sheath? The midnight oh. arena. No, maybe. No, you gotta call it the sheath. The sheath. She's a that swordsman. Is, that is pretty good. I like that. The sheath. Yeah. Uh, uh, any other characters you would want to see? I think we could get like a Jimmy Olsen type guy, who he's you know, he's still wearing the bow tie and the like, sweater vest, but he's like, fifty three. Mm-hmm. And he's still got the little shorts on and everything, but he just knows all of the horrible things that all the heroes and villains do in like their in their spare time. Yeah. So it's oh. like when Phil needs to blackmail a hero in order to you know get one of his clients off. He goes to Bimmy Bolson. Yeah, you know, he goes to uh, Jacob Gloth. His name's Jacob Gloth, and it, he's played by you. Oh, I don't, I don't want to play a fifty-year-old bow tie guy. Uh, I don't think I could pull it off, you know, considering I'm not fifty. Fair enough. Who, who? I, I guess it's animated though, so I could. Do it. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll do his voice for you. He's he's, he's like kind of curmudgeon, but he's also kind of bright. He's like, hey guys, or I'm Bimmy Bolson. Oh no, wait, his name's Jake Gloth. He sounds it? pretty uh, drunk. Also. Oh, I'm 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 Bimmy, I'm I'm Jacob. 
What can I do for you? He sounds kind of drunk also, which I like. I think you should make him drunk. Hey, it's Sir Phil, Seth Gazer. You know, I knew hey. your dad once. He had a thing for De- Asian Death hookers. Gazer. He, he loved them, them Asians. I don't know why. I don't it was, was kind of weird and maybe weirdly sec, uh, perverted. I he, don't know. He, he did take a Possibly lot of trips racist. to Thailand. If you, if you catch my Came back with a little Taiwanese boy that one time. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't it, sexual or anything. He, he was just, he adopted him. It was, yeah. it was a good thing. You've seen, it was really, he's actually your brother. Congratulations. He got all the money. It's your brother you don't know about and isn't on any paperwork. Yeah, he got all the money. That's so what do you want to know? <laughs> and he's like saying that he's just spilling all this information, and yeah, Phil's and Phil's death. faith is just dropping. He's like, I have a Taiwanese brother, and and our, our guy's just yeah, like, yeah. Oh, so does so does Ultraman. Ultraman. Yeah, don't worry about He's got a little him. Taiwanese boy too, but that one isn't as okay as what your dad did. Yeah, that one's a little weird. It's a little more weird. And uh, it's fine. It's just uh, what do you want to know? And he's like, oh yeah, I, I, uh, I, I have a case. Uh, could you help me out with that? And then I'd like to talk more about the, my dad's a pedophile thing. Uh, no, I don't. Nah, no, I talked about it. Your dad, he, he, he was a lovely him. Wasn't man. Bad. No, he wasn't. Except for all those people he murdered. Yeah. That was bad. Because he was a villain, you know he that, right? Your super... dad was a very awful person. He killed so many people. He, he, uh, <laughs> yeah, your dad was a really bad person. He blinded the police commissioner's daughter. It was really fucked up. God. He put her in a wheelchair. She can't walk? No, she can walk. She just, she's just lazy now. He made her really lazy. Now she just refuses to walk anywhere. She needs to be wheeled. <laughs> she, so she's not paralyzed? No, she's just lazy. He hit her with a lazy ray. <laughs> yeah. I didn't oh make God. her. I just made her ass magnetized to the seat. Yeah. And you know, he also killed like a bunch of oh people. Oh my too. God! But like, you know, hundreds. Some would say he did destroy your entire home planet. You know that, right? Yeah, the whole planet gone <laughs> oh, because of him. Yeah. Destroyed it on purpose. It wasn't like an accident or anything. He destroyed it because he wanted to. Yeah. Bad guy. But uh, uh good to see you. Haven't seen you since your father's funeral. I went there. I you didn't see me. I I came after you guys all left, and I took a big old shit on his grave. Yeah, because your dad was an asshole. Just asshole. He also stole my third wife. Back when she your was, mom actually. Yeah, <laughs> she was a fucking whore. It was weird though, because when you know when she left, she was pregnant. So what you nah, want to know about? <laughs> Yo, buddy, uh, Jacob Gloss. It's like hinted throughout the show that maybe he's actually his dad. They've got the same eye color and same hair color. Yeah, and and like every once in a while he actually calls him son. He's like, "Did you just call me son?" He's like, "Nah, you know, no, no, no." Yeah, and maybe Sunny, you know. Oh, Sunny Slim Jim, I love you, son. I mean, uh, I love you, son. <laughs> uh, well i think that- i feel like they need they need like um a contact in like the henchman union oh, i feel like yeah. there's gotta be a union of henchmen mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, maybe it's like some big burly henchman right like some crazy big tough guy and i imagine that this is an animated show yeah. and you never actually see his head you just see like his chest yeah and his like uh, his muscles and you hear his voice, and they're always you always just see other characters like looking up like, oh, hi. And he's always, you know, he's just looking down at them. Me kind of obviously see yeah, his maybe, head. You maybe can see like the tilt in his I don't yeah. know, back or something. He maybe, you know, you see his chin when he sits down in the courtroom. You yeah. know how they're all like standing and then it's like Your Honor the Honorable Judge uh Matheson presiding. And I'm like, you may sit, and he sits down, and you think, oh, we get to see his face now. And he, he sits there, and you can only see, like, this yeah, much. Yeah, the camera just goes down with him. <laughs> yeah. I th- Well, I think, do you have any other ideas? I'm kind of out of ideas, but I think this out. is a good, good show. I, I'm enjoying it. I think I think it's pretty fun. You know, it's a good idea with, like, um, you know, a super, like, a you know, justice system that mm-hmm. we can explore, like, these legal questions. Yeah. Um, about just really stupid things. And I then, think we got some interesting characters. You know, Midnight 
Swordsman. Um, Swordsman. Swordsman's cool. Maybe the Sheath's a cool name Mid- for a Midnight place Swordsman to... is a woman who is pretending to be a man. Ooh. And maybe there could be like evidence. Oh, is... like so that's that's kind of what it is. Like Midnight Swordsman, the the superhero. Yeah. Is is a is a guy. Yeah. Like everyone thinks it's a guy, but it's obviously a girl just doing like a deep voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Michelle, whatever you said her last name was. Um, Estras. You know, is 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 a woman doing yeah. her normal voice, and it's like so obvious to the audience that they're the same person. But mm-hmm. our character is always like. You know, you really look like that midnight swordsman, but you know, obviously that's a that's a dude. Is he like your brother or something? Yeah, have, you have, have, you, have you ever gotten that before? Family resemblance? Maybe you've seen a large man just looming in the back of your family reunions with swords on his back? Yeah. No, okay. No, okay. I'm thinking we could do. Uh, I I know you watch Brooklyn Nine Nine, so we do Rosa Rosa's voice. You know, Rosa in the show's voice is the Midnight Swordsman voice. Oh, and the Michelle and, is like normal. Yeah. Stephanie Beatrix's voice. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's that'd be funny. That'd we be should fun. get her to play the Midnight Swordsman. I would love that. That'd be great. Uh, yeah. That, that works too, because so we don't even have to do. Um, like she doesn't even have to. Like the Midnight Swordsman doesn't actually have to be a guy. It can just be like, no, that couldn't be her because like her voice is really deep. Midnight mm-hmm. Swordsman. Yeah. So this couldn't be. Could be. Could be a woman. They wouldn't let a woman near those. That but many objects. I'm saying objects. it could be because you know uh, Rosa's character is you know uh, uh, like Rosa in Brooklyn Nine Nine is a woman. Her voice is just yeah. you know scary. Her voice. And they'd is be like, scary. no, I couldn't be her. That woman, you know, her voice is in a much you know lower register, very intimidating. Michelle is like a uh, is is you know she's just a nice, just kind, nice warm and person. Lovely. She's always smiling, and she's never smiling. Her grandma, yeah. whenever she talks to her family, it's like, oh, Michelle's so lovely. She's always smiling. Cut to Michelle. <laughs> and and, and no, it's just a straight face. And we have, like, uh, Phil look over and be like, I don't, uh-huh. I don't think I've ever seen her smile. Yeah, she's got a, she's got beautiful teeth. Beautiful uh, teeth. What do her teeth look like? <laughs> yeah. It's always just the same, you know, closed mouth. And uh, there could, there should definitely, at least, this is the last episode idea I have. There should definitely be at least one episode that explores the idea of like, no, a- any uh, confessions or evidence discovered under the use of a lasso or band of truth is inadmissible in court. You can't oh use lasso and truths in court or like, you know, you know, power woman's tiara of, uh, and to, of not lying. Oh, and then and then you can you can uh, to to make that argument like you know valid in court. The judge would be like, well, I don't see why we wouldn't do that. You know, there's the this is a completely valid reason or yeah. way to get truth out of someone. He'll be like, look, he like pulls the judge aside. He's like, look, all right, if they start using lassos of truth, we're getting out of. They job. don't need people to argue in court. You and I we're out of a job, mm-hmm. so yeah. So just shut the fuck up, judge. Shut the fuck up. And uh, just let it go. The judge is like, oh, I see. Yes, yeah, this is, yeah. this is and, how you're right. And maybe, uh, you know, I, I'm imagining Phil is kind of being like he's sleazy. He's a little sleazy. So he just like slides like a folder onto onto the judge's desk. And it's just like, yeah, found. It would be a shame if the if these pictures of you partying like it's 1998 would uh show up online i don't think your wife would f- enjoy these pictures being uh you know out in the world for everyone to see would you and he's like no and be like so do you think the last of truth should be used in court uh mm-mm. no no not at all definitely not nope, not at all like and right before the judge was like right before he went to recess it was like very obvious that he was for it so the other lawyer is like what like how did this happen yeah, and maybe the other lawyer is like a sniveling like asshole who thinks he's way better than our boy Philip. Uh, he should probably have like a, a villain lawyer, yeah. like that continually meets him in court. Maybe. It, um, oh, the villain lawyer. Or like a like a not like a villain lawyer. I mean like a hero lawyer. Yeah. But like he's the villain of the show. But oh my god, the villain of the show, the hero lawyer, can be the son of the arch enemy of death gazer philip's dad it could be an oh intergenerational gosh. thing it is a generational thing this is amazing yeah all right i love it well that's my idea i feel like what, what should he be like though 
Uh, I think he should be like so. Well, he's the he's like basically Superman's kid, basically, right? Yeah. So he's like he's full of himself. He knows he's right. He knows he's on the right side of history, and that he he's always right, and he's smart, and he's the smartest guy in the room. And he's handsome, and you know, rich and powerful, and everyone's always thought I was the coolest fucking guy ever. And I think yeah. our guy can be like, no, you're a bad lawyer. Maybe he, you know, has the case on him, and our guy blackmails the judge to let him win. And and, and maybe like every single case, every single court case, he brings up like the same argument. And he's like, he's like, and what the hero did was right because truth, justice, and the, the American, American way. way. And then like, and then uh, maybe in the first time he does it, there's like claps and like people cheer and stuff. <laughs> and then. Like, by the last time, he's, the judge is like, look, dude, you do this every single time, okay? Everyone knows that you're going to say this. You, we know. And there's, like, people in the back with, like, bets on when he's going to say it. Throwing, and it's like, like there's a whole gambling ring around paper when airplanes this guy's going to deliver like, these lines. Like, spitballs, paper airplanes. Just talking, like, boo, get off the stage. Maybe our maybe this like thing becomes like a way our character makes money. Mm -hmm. Like uh, he's he's bet so much money on like when this guy's gonna say and he's an expert in it and people yeah. like come to him for like advice on when they should bet when he's gonna deliver like these cheesy lines that he always gives. Well, I think one thing we could do with this guy, this hero lawyer, is have him like every time he loses a, his a case to Philip or Phil Philadelphia. Uh, every time he loses a case to Philadelphia, he is in another accident that causes him to basically get, like, supervillain powers. Oh my god, like, so he, like, slowly becomes a supervillain throughout the show. Yeah, like, the, by the, like, end of the first case that they have together, he loses, and he's so angry, he's not paying attention, he trips, he falls out a window into, a, like, a truck full of toxic waste. <laughs> and like the next time they see him in court, he's just kind of like a big melting guy. <laughs> like he's he's human skin, but he's just kind of like melty and pudgy. You're like oh, oh my god, I'm fine. And then like he you know gets a scorpion tail. <laughs> Maybe it should be slower than that. So like first off, it's like he loses his hand, and now he has like a robot hand. Yeah. And then he loses an eye, and then like the the ultimate one is when he gets melted. Yeah. And he's like a melted dude now. He's melted, he's got, a, like, a lizard tail and wings. But yeah. But they're, like, demon wings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening to the Very Reasonable Pilots Podcast. I've been your host, Charles Long. With me, as always, been my co-host, Jacob Gloth. Uh, you can find us at uh, Twitter, at VRP Podcast, and you can find uh, me on Twitter, at Charles underscore Lungs. And you can't find Jacob anywhere. He's hidden. He's like Because he's dead. He's like Carmen Sandiego. We don't know where he is. He's all over the world, and yet he's nowhere. I forgot about that. He's wow, a, what a reference. Yeah, he's all over the world, and yet he's nowhere. And he's everywhere, because he's in our hearts. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, America. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>